Hello and welcome. I'm joined here today with David who is a horn player with the Royal New Zealand Air Force Band. I've invited him here today because I have a horn to try and I don't know how to play the horn very well myself. So this is the Eater Sound ESD 560. Uh, it's a horn that they've sent me to give my thoughts on it, but because as I said I'm not much of a horn player, I'm going to let this man give his thoughts on it instead. Uh, so what do you normally play on? What's your, what's your go-to instrument? Uh, so the instrument that I play is an Alexander 103, which was uh, provided to me by the Royal New Zealand Air Force Band very kindly. And uh, that's a, a pro-level instrument for those who don't know? It is definitely a pro-level instrument. Yeah, it's worth about 10 of these in terms of monetary value. Uh, but in terms of sound, we're going to have a bit of a comparison to see what that sounds like. So we'll first start with the Alexander 103. And then David will play the same thing on the Eater Sound horn. So David, having uh, given this horn a bit of a go, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, well, my immediate thoughts on any horn always go to the sound and the sound quality. And of course I play on an Alex 103, which the principal feature of an Alex is its beautiful sound. That's why you play it. And when I first played this horn, first thing I noticed was it's got a wonderful sound. So it didn't feel too different, although immediately it was a lot brighter and it was easier to play louder. There's less resistance I think. Are there any things that you don't like about this? Well as soon as I put my hand on it I noticed the trigger, the B flat F trigger is placed unusually low so that's riding right on the ridge between my palm and my thumb. Usually when you have a trigger it's placed right on the thumb. So that unusual placement was first something to get used to. We're not really we move more like this than like this and also it's just a little bit awkwardly placed so it's something you could rearrange your hand position for but I certainly am more used to putting my hand palm right on the lead pipe and having the trigger sitting on the tip of my thumb. So I know that one of the controversial things about French horns is that they don't necessarily always have spit valves. Now I think personally this is the stupidest thing in the world, but this is an example of a horn that doesn't have a spit valve. Where do you, where do you weigh in on such matters? Uh, well you see, um, when I was studying at university, my first year recital, I played it on a Hans Hoyer horn, which didn't have a spit valve. And lo and behold, somewhere in the middle of the piece I was playing, my valves filled up with water and I had to perform the horn dance which is emptying out everything, turning it three times over and giving it a little jiggle around and that completely took away from the performance. It's so much easier just to have a spit valve on the bottom of the lead pipe just and then you're good. Fantastic. And of course that's subtle. So that's the sort of thing you want to be doing in the middle of a, a, middle of a performance is juggling with your instrument and doing all sorts of things. Let's give you a bit of a physical rundown of this instrument. It is a full 
F B flat double French horn. We have the two sides on it. We've got the F side around the front and the B flat side around the back. We've got the fourth valve, which is actuated by a thumb trigger, which is operated by your thumb, as you would guess by the name thumb trigger. The arrangement of the tubing is in a crusty wrap, which means that you've got the, the fairly large bell that goes along with that. Uh, the alternative is the Gaia wrap, which is where you generally have the four valves in a line as opposed to the fourth valve being offset. Um, that instrument tends to have less bends and nooks and crannies in it, and um, it has a smaller bell, it's just one of the tendencies. Taking a look at the back side of this instrument, not the back side, the back end, I, well that's not much better. Taking a look at the reverse of this instrument, we see a couple of things to note. Firstly, that the tuning slides are here and here, they are in opposite directions. Some people prefer tuning slides that are both in the same direction, so you can sort of pull them both out and do a double dump, a very exciting double dump. Uh, one thing that I found very interesting about this instrument is that the tuning slide, the primary tuning slide, um, is has a reversed lead pipe. Uh, so if you look at the, the lead pipe that comes through here, the end of the lead pipe goes inside the main tuning slide instead of the tuning slide going inside the lead pipe. I didn't know, frankly, that French horns sometimes had reverse lead pipes, but there you go. This tuning slide down here is, is what you would expect the normal manner. I mentioned earlier that this is a double French horn. Uh, that naming may be confusing to some of you, so I encourage you to look at the videos I've created called All About the French Horn to understand all the different types of French horns. But a double French horn, and particularly one like this in F and B flat, is the one that you would generally want once you've got out of the beginner stages. Uh, if you're a beginner, you may want a single French horn, uh, like this one right here, which is a single horn in E flat. B flat rather, I apologise. Uh, but once you've sort of grown out of a single horn, a double horn is going to be the instrument that you want. And this is a perfect example of a fairly inexpensive double horn. If you're interested in finding more information about this, then uh, there will be a link in the video description. Uh, the retail price for this is $1,400 US dollars or thereabouts. Uh, at the moment, they're offering a pre-Christmas special though, so if you use the code Trent, you will get a whopping discount before Christmas. It'll bring the price down to about a thousand US dollars, which is a fantastic price for an instrument of this caliber. Um, so that deal isn't going to last forever, so make sure you check that link out. Thanks very much for watching. Is there anything else that you'd like to, to play? or Because normally I do something at the start and at the end. So if there's you play something with me? <laughs> Um, is there any is there any relatively simple duets? Well, I mean, do you mind playing the horn very badly on camera? No.